okay so uh, let's jump into a spring boot uh, uh, so uh, do you know how does a spring boot handle circular dependencies uh yes uh, so circular dependencies are like uh, so where like a spring boot tries to uh, resolve them using a proxy beans uh, but if uh, two beans depends on um, each other directly uh, spring will throw uh, bean some current uh, currently in kinds of exception and uh, this can be uh, fixed by breaking the dependency by refactoring uh, using a lazy uh, on a one of a bean and uh, using a setter injection instead of a constructor injection and uh, also like there is a managed reference and uh, you know uh, there is a one another reference that need to be used so when there is a rep, uh, dependencies in from many to one or one to many so this can be checked okay uh, so uh, what happens internally when you run a spring boot application do you know uh, yes uh, it does a, a lot under the hood when uh, we run a spring uh, application dot run a uh, few key things uh, happen like uh, bootstrap uh, uh, the application so basically it creates a uh, like application context uh, usually a notation uh, uh, for the web app and uh, then it loads the configuration uh, read application dot properties file or uh, yml file uh, for the auto configuration bean and then it starts embedded a uh, server that is uh, tomcat jt or any and uh, then it performed like a class path uh, uh, scanning so it uh, detects uh, uh, components uh, services repositories all these annotation classes and then it registers bean so for this like uh, uses a dependency injection to wire up everything and uh, then runs uh, application runner if you have a command line runner or uh, application runner those execute after uh, these apps uh, are started okay so uh, what is the difference between uh, transactional at uh, the class level versus uh, method level uh, if we uh, put a transactional at a class level all method uh, in a class get a transaction behavior uh, but uh, at a method level only that specific method is a uh, transactional so basically it is a if we uh, add in a class level so it is a public for all the method and uh, in method level like it overrides uh, uh, class level uh, setting and uh, if different so if a method inside the same class call so uh, another uh, method it won't uh, trigger a uh, a new transaction unless you use a self invocation uh, with the AOP proxy uh, at the rate enable so aspect J uh, annotation is there okay uh, what uh, what's the trick behind a transactional propagation and the propagation we give like required news uh, normally uh, at the rate transactional method joins uh, like a existing transaction uh, but require new is a propagation if we give uh, explicitly so it suspend the existing transaction and uh, it uh, starts the new one so it is a uh, useful uh, when we don't want to roll back the outer transaction to affect uh, inner operation kinds of uh, however using it uh, uh, carelessly can lead to performance issues uh, because uh, it commits uh, separately okay uh, why uh at the rate rest controller advice uh, better than uh, at the rate exception handler uh, inside the controller uh, at the rate uh, controller advice uh, is a, a global exception uh, handler 
so uh, if you input like a at the rate exception handler inside the controller uh, it uh, only works for uh, that controller but uh, the at the rate rest uh, controller advice uh, you can handle exception uh, for entire application so it's uh, like a cleaner avoid a duplicate exception handling uh, logic uh, can be also combined with the uh, response status and the response body and it helps uh, log uh, uh, error uh, centrally okay uh, how does spring boot optimize a database uh, uh, connection handling uh, it, uh, okay so it does a lot of uh, under uh, the hood uh, like uh, it uses a connection pooling uh, with the hikari cp uh, that is the default and uh, which is a uh, faster than the tomcat pool and uh, auto configuration uh, uh, data source uh, like jdbc template and entity manager and also uses a uh, uh, spring transaction management to avoid uh, unnecessary commits and uh, also supports uh, reads uh, vas write separation uh, when uh, configuration with the multiple data source uh, how does a scheduled uh, at the rate scheduled you know uh, work internally Uh, Spring Boot has a inbuilt uh, task scheduler uh, that runs a scheduled uh, task in a separate thread pool. Uh, internally, it uses a task scheduler and a scheduled uh, executor service. So, by default, uh, uh, all at the rate uh, scheduled uh, annotation task run in a single threaded executor. Uh, which can cause a delay and uh, also we can configure a thread pool uh, using at the rate uh, enable uh, scheduling and uh, also like a task scheduler bean to run task uh, uh, concurrently okay uh, what's the tricky uh, part about uh, catching uh, with the at the rate catchable have you ever used Yes, uh, cache, uh, at the rate cache, well, I have used uh, like uh, simply if we uh, uh, want to leverage it, then we can add a starter cache uh, dependency in the pom.xml. And uh, then uh, if uh, this uh, method uh, returns null, so it won't uh, cache uh, unless uh, uh, you set, uh, uh, you know, uh, result uh, is equal to null. So it won't work inside the same class because uh, Spring uh, proxies uh, don't apply to self uh, invoked method and a default cache manager like uh, you know concurrent uh, map cache manager don't uh, support uh, eviction policies uh, you need uh, caffeine redis or uh, EV, uh, eh cache for that and uh, if we uh, ca if we like a uh, cache key is uh, complex it's uh, better to define a uh, key generator instead of a default method uh, signature based uh, key okay uh, how does spring boot handle a security in a reactive application like uh, webflux did you get chance to work on this uh, yeah, uh, Webflux uh, uh, uses uh, uh, string, uh, sorry, Spring security uh, for reactive applications, uh, which is a bit different from uh, MVC. So it uses like a security web filter chain uh, instead of web security configure app adopter. And uh, also it works with the uh, uh, Mono and uh, Flux. Uh, so authentication or uh, authorization uh, is a fully non-blocking so server security context uh, this repository uh, helps to manage authentication state and uh, you can't use uh, like uh, uh, at the rate enable uh, web security uh, everything is uh, configured via uh, beans okay 
ओके सो हाउ डज स्प्रिंग बूट यू नो सो देर इज लाइक अ कंडीशनल ऑन प्रॉपर्टी एनोटेशन हाउ इज इट यूज एंड हाउ इट वर्क बेसिकली ओके स्प्रिंग बूट्स कंडीशनल एनोटेशन लाइक देर इज अ टू लाइक ऑन प्रॉपर्टी एंड ऑन क्लास लाइक फॉर द conditions uh, uh, api to decide if the bean should be loaded so for example like uh, if at the rate conditional on uh, property and the name will give a uh, kinds of a uh, future toggle or something right having a uh, value is equal to true so basically this ensures the bean is only created when uh, property is a set and uh, also this is a uh, super useful for uh, enabling or disabling uh, you know features of uh, dynamically okay uh, why uh, is at the rate async uh, annotation not working a uh, common uh, mistake like at the rate uh, async only works when uh, you have uh, like uh, you know at the rate enable async uh, in a config class so the method is uh, in a spring managed bean uh, which is a self invocation won't work and uh, the return uh, type is a completable future or a future we can say or like uh, any void type and uh, if using a uh, custom executor it must be defined in the uh, async annotation so like uh, we have uh, you know at the rate async and then within a bracket we'll need to give like custom executors kinds of all right uh, how does spring boot handle uh, hot reloading uh, have you heard this term uh yeah spring boot uh, supports a hot uh, uh, reloading uh, like uh, basically there is, there are certain uh, spring boot dev tools uh, uh for restarting the context and uh, live reloading uh, for refreshing resources like uh, html or css and uh, same like spring boot uh, thin launcher uh, for reducing the startup time all right uh why at the rate component is can needed a uh, uh, when we already have at the rate spring boot application annotation uh yeah so at the rate spring boot uh, application already includes at the rate uh, component is can but uh, uh it uh, only scan the package under its uh, location uh if we need to scan other packages uh, or we want to customize that uh, the different packages uh, if we have and we if we want to point that so we must uh, you know specify them uh, manually so simply we can write like at the rate component scan and uh, base package so there we can define the package name sometime also we get the error where this class is not found or something right so maybe uh like we we'll need to specify the specific uh, you know the package if those are not pointing so at the rate component uh, scan uh, allows you filtering uh, exclude the certain bins uh uh how does spring boot handles uh, uh, property overriding uh spring boot uh, follows like you know uh, certain uh, means uh, like the order uh, the first like a uh, command line argument which is like highest priority and uh, second then it loads application dot uh, property or the uh, application dot yml file and then os uh, uh, environment variable and then uh, if there is a default value from at the rate value so we can like override the properties dynamically using the environment uh, post processor also and uh, profiles like the application uh, if we have dev prod or like str or uat right uh, or qa so make it like even more uh, flexible okay so one last question here uh, how does uh, how do you debug a slow startup time in uh, spring boot uh, mm, if uh, slow 
startup times okay uh, so basically uh, our application uh, takes oh, forever to start like uh, if so we can enable a debug mode like uh, we have a debug uh, so shows like auto configuration logs and uh, also like uh, we can use uh, um, a spring boot starter actuator uh, to check like you know the check uh, actuator uh, endpoint uh, so, like uh, or the conditions to which like the beans are loaded and uh, we can uh, use like profile startup uh, time using a uh, spring boot uh, starter uh, timer task and uh, also we can check the database connection issues like uh, hikari uh, if we are using hikari cp so log for the uh, tracing and also uh, yeah i think that's it i guess we can do and apart from mm, <clears throat> not so i think uh, these, these are the one only we can apply okay uh, all right